Okay, in this third session, we'll be looking at the peak over threshold methods, uh, which are different from the, the maximum method. So there, there, are, there are obviously relationships between a maximum and something, a value that exceeds uh, a threshold. So we're no looking like at block data, but uh, or the maximum within the block. We just look at all the data. That's nice. We don't have to do this blocking, uh, which leads to this issue uh, that we saw the uh, in the return levels that they're not very robust. So we just look at the threshold, and we can, can see how much this threshold is exceeded and how frequently it is exceeded. So we study the behavior of the distribution above uh, u. So and of course. <clears throat> it, um, the value of u will will matter, so uh, we'd like to get u again as high as possible, uh, and we'll see that will be then in line with some limit distribution. But of course, as as we take u uh, larger, then there will be less and less data above u, and again we run into this problem of running out of data for for ex our extremes. Okay, so. What's the theory? Theory is quite simple. Um, we need to know the distribution of exceedances. So if you define a certain threshold, uh, some some value, then we are interested in the exceedances. That means y plus u. So later we'll call this x, but let's call this now y plus u, so that y is positive. So we're looking at a value above uh, above u. So we're interested in uh, for that given u. We're interested in the cumulative distribution of 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 x as a function of that y. So that means the probability that x exceeds a certain uh, threshold, given that uh, x, it, it, that that's the amount of exceedance above that threshold, given that you know it is above the threshold. So why do we have this conditional distribution here? And that make that kind of makes sense because later on we'll just uh, in the modeling we'll just um, take a threshold and look only at the data above that threshold, and so remove the data below the threshold. So we have now a condition uh, that is there for that. So that is simply in, in, in terms of probability, that is simply a conditional distribution is, is the joint distribution divided by the marginal distribution. And this is what this here uh, reflects. So in terms of the theory, so um, if you indeed have a distribution of block maxima that asymptotes to the GEV, then you can also look at the probability of exceedance and that and asymptotes into uh, B O I here, asymptotes into the generalized Pareto distribution. So that's the kind of the equivalent of the generalized extreme value distribution, but now for peak over thresholds instead of maximum. And so we again see this, this form returning here. This is a general Pareto distribution, uh, but now for, for these exceedances, and we note again that we have a parameter xi, the shape parameter. Uh, then we, of course, have the value u, which is the threshold, and then the sigma and the mu uh, are, the, are, are additional parameters. So this is now the equivalent theoretical distributions for uh, the this, for the exceedance over threshold. Okay, so uh, the Pareto distribution. Um, so here we have the CDF uh, of the Pareto distribution, uh, and so um, here are some examples of that. Um, so again, we see the shape parameter psi. So uh, if xi is positive, I have a heavy tail. Um, it's, if, if xi is zero, I have sort of more the central type of tail, and I have a thin tail for xi is being negative. So again, we'll find that um, if you look at the normal distribution, exponential distribution, they will converge to uh, these guys. If you look at, for example, the, the log hyperbolic distribution, uh, they will converge to something positive, or, or even the Pareto distribution, uh, the fractal laws, and all that stuff that that converges to xi being positive. So, what's going to be the estimation procedure now? Um, so, it's very simple. Uh, it's actually select a threshold u large enough. We'll we'll have to worry about that. Um, there's going to be thresholds. If you go too low, then uh, then things break down, and we'll see that later. We can actually uh, later we'll talk a little bit about what what are good thresholds to choose, at least uh, in terms of uh, high enough. So then you extract the exceedances from the data set. So for example, you have n values out of the big N, um, and then we can fit GDP to exceedance data, uh, which yields us then this uh, conditional distribution, which is a function of u. So then, of course, we would like to know just the probability that x is larger than some value x uh, in, in total when you look at entire population. 
given uh, removed exceedance. So that will be the unconditional distribution. Instead of conditional distribution, then we have to multiply by the marginal. Uh, and that's what you know shown on the previous slide as well. Uh, so then we have the marginal distribution here. We have the fitted GDP distribution, and we can calculate uh, return values from this unconditional distribution. Okay, so now we can uh, also start looking at uh, return levels, just uh, like we did with the uh, block maxima. So here's the uh, generalized extreme value distribution in terms of the conditional distribution. Uh, so and it looks a little weird here, but do mine here doesn't x here and a u there. Uh, so the x has to be larger than u. So what's the probability of exceeding x when x is larger than u? And given that I take all the data larger than u, so that is described by theoretically by this distribution. So the unconditional now uh, involves the uh, the marginalization, which is this distribution here. So so remember that in terms of return level, we have to sort of make uh, the following statement: is that uh, define a level x m that's exceeded on average every m observation. So that's kind of the same thing we were discussing when we talked about uh, block maxima. And so this every m observations, this period is related to to one uh, one over p. So we remember that p uh, that um, t was uh, equivalent to one over p. So that means that um, if I look at that, um, then I'm going to equate this to this uh, one over t because this is a probability here. So this is the one over m. Uh, so now we have m instead of t, uh, and I equate that to this probability, so I get one over that probability. So then. <coughs> We can work out uh, the quantile function. Uh, remember the quantile function, I have inverted everything so that I just get x on the left-hand side. And so if I do this math, then uh, I come out to, to this guy here. So again, I have u plus some, some value uh, that I get here over here. This is for xi is uh, not zero. And if xi is zero, I get this simple log relationship. So again, I get a linear relationship between log something logarithm and, and xm. Okay, let's now look at <clears throat> what that gives. Uh, so again, I do the same plot as before. Uh, so I have this uh, return level plot, and so this was my plot uh, that I got for block maxima. And here I have a peak over a threshold. So for example, um, I have here 640 peaks over 30 uh, millimeter. This is so. This is 30 millimeter, and look at all these peaks. Um, so you notice that I have to decide here at some point where 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 to start or stop. And so I fit this distribution uh, for all these uh, data points, and I get now this distribution here, uh, or this fit here. Uh, so notice again, it looks like we are we're having somewhat of a Gumbel distribution. So now I can look at this return uh, value at 100. Uh, so at 100, uh, which would be over here, I find for the block maxima a value, a return value of 127. So that's every 100 years. Uh, and this is 100 is for is year 120. What's more important uh, to notice here is that uh, if you look at some confidence interval, uh, I'm not sure how much this is exactly, but um, this is the sum value, some percentage confidence, um, then you get here 152 millimeter and 138. So you notice that the confidence uh, is larger here than over here. Uh, that doesn't mean that uh, necessarily that this is better than the other. Uh, it has actually a lot to do with what we'll see next, which is the selection of this, this, P, this threshold uh, for, for that fitting. And so we have to determine what is a, what is a suitable threshold. So yeah, so in, in terms of comparison, um, I think the main issue here uh, is is that on the block maxima approach, the main issue is that um, that you run out of samples uh, very quickly with the blocking, and that's what we saw uh, when we were discussing the non-robust return levels. And so um, the main issue for the peak of a threshold method is that you need some diagnostics for this threshold selection. Uh, and so here in, in this presentation here, they, they stated that this choice is somewhat ambiguous. And so in the next slides, I show that there's actually a lot of things you could do uh, in terms of selecting an appropriate threshold. Okay, so 
let's discuss a little bit about this uh, diagnostic for threshold selection, uh, which, which is quite important uh, for practical reasons, as we saw. So we don't want to take threshold too low. Uh, that leads to bias, uh, because any estimator of parameters, remember, is only true in the limit criterion, which is infinite. So the extreme value distributions only exist in infinite, uh, infinite limit. Uh, and don't really apply uh, for finite limits uh, or when it, when you have an, um, we're not at infinity. And so uh, we have to be mindful of that. We also don't want to take it too high, uh, which would be good for bias, but then of course leads to this variance problem. Uh, so this is bias variance a threshold uh, trade-off that, that that's becoming uh, very important. So we need to, need to use some diagnostic plots um, on, on uh, basically on selecting this threshold. Um, and so we want to get some, some um, compromise between these two here. There's some, there's some nice theoretical work you could do, and, and, and there's nice theoretical work that actually calculates this bias and this variance and, and allows you to make that threshold. We're not going to go into that. Uh, we'll just be looking at uh, some simple diagnostic plots. So one uh, way to look at it is to say, can I look at an estimate directly of Xi? Uh, so uh, previously we looked at uh, maximum likelihood methods and uh, and those are nice, but they're not necessarily quickly insightful uh, because it involves estimating all the parameters together. What if I just want to estimate Xi because Xi is really determining the shape of the extreme value distribution and whether you have a Pareto type or or some of the middle type, Kumpel type, or, or when you have negative Xi value. So it's, I'm really interested mostly in Xi, because uh, that's really determining uh, you know, the estimation of the extremes. So in order to do that, uh, we're going to calculate uh, what's called the mean excess function, and actually the mean excess of the logarithm of the data. So now what I'm going to do is not calculate the probability, but calculate the average of the log here uh, of uh, the difference between the log of x uh, and u, for given that x is is, is larger than u. Uh, so then we're going to calculate this expected value of this x log exceedance here. And we know that if u goes to infinity, uh, we can calculate directly from the extreme value distribution that this should this quantity should become become xi. So in order to to present that in a, in a plot uh, empirically, um, what we'll do is <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll be uh, ranking the data. So you have some, some, say your diamond sample here. We have big stone here, and we have small stone. So ranking of data um, is often uh, represented by by the star here. So this is uh, this is basically all the data now ranked into uh, something from small, the first one, into the large, the, the largest one. And so we're going to estimate then simply. Uh, for, for this data, we're going to estimate uh, this mean excess function, which is simply estimated by taking the data uh, above the threshold. So uh, there's some threshold that occurs at some point, let's say x to n minus k. So this is the essentially the k largest uh, observations that we're, we're looking at above some threshold. So I'm only looking now at the k largest uh, observations. So that's why I write also n minus k. Remember that n is my total sample size. And so um, what I get then is the estimator directly of Xi is simply then this, this, this equation, right? So the condition is now gone because I only use the data above the threshold. And so now I can, you can notice that I can start uh, plotting Xi as a function of K. And so uh, that will be done in the next slide. So here's an example of that. Um, so here's K. Right, and so remember, k large means the the smaller stones, and k high means the bigger stones because I rank from from uh, from the first uh, to the to the last one. So I kind of inverted that here. So this is k, uh, so this is not n or, or one to n. So this this counts down basically to the largest stones. Um, and so if I plot xi, if I use xi, uh, if I use a lot of data, you notice that xi is starting to be high. And as I use more and more data, less and less data, and Xi seems to drop down, it seems to converge to some level. So somewhere around here, 0 0.6, uh, 0 0.7. So what this suggests, of course, is that here you see the bias, right? Here, if I use too many data for extreme value estimations, and I get Xi that is too optimistic, that means too large, 
Uh, and I'd, I'd like to have a large Xi, right? Because remember, this is large stone. So, uh, and then as I decrease, then it seems like uh, I stabilize. And as I decrease too much, you notice start variance, right? So the estimating uh, estimator starts to, to fluctuate a lot. So evidently, I'd like to be over here, but up over here, I could not get a lot of fluctuation. So it seems that there's probably some middle ground over here uh, that that comes out. And these are actually, uh, there are bootstrap techniques, there are theoretical techniques that look at this, this trade-off. And essentially, the trade-off between bias and variance is mean squared error. So we can minimize mean squared error uh for example using bootstrap methods and uh and, and selecting that, that that threshold but it also can be done quite well visually you could see that any threshold selected in this area would be will be pretty good another uh, same kind of way of looking at the same thing but now focusing only on Pareto distributions um, or specifically on Pareto distributions the period of contact plot so a Pareto quantile plot is simply uh, investigating whether or not you have a Pareto distribution. A Pareto distribution is, is a simple case of, or, uh, of the general extreme value distribution. So now uh, we'll be plotting uh, the logarithm minus the logarithm of this here. So remember this minus log of one minus p. J are the are the the j largest uh, um, essentially uh, values you. Uh, sorry, the j counts down towards the extremes. Let's say so if I have the largest two extremes, then that would be J is two. So this is basically this one minus P here. And so I've, I've mentioned before in previous presentation that this minus log of one minus P is going to occur a lot. And this is what we see here. So if theoretically, if, if, um, if I plot this versus the logarithm of the largest observations, so this is the J largest observations, uh, then so these are the observations, uh, the logarithm. So here we're looking at stones, um, uh, of a substantial size, right? This is in the, in the hundreds or thousands, uh, potentially. So we have here a number of stones that have very high carat value. This is size distribution. So this is in carats. Um, so we get uh, these two large stones here. Seems to be the same uh, value. So uh, so if I plot that, um, I get this, this, this uh, theoretically, I get a straight line when I go to infinity. So again, if I go larger and larger, then I get this plot. But you notice also already that it seems to be converges to a, or to a straight line uh, at some particular uh, level or threshold here, which is uh, at 10 to the minus one, so maybe 0 0.1 carat. Um, and, and then I can fit that again at k is 285. I get a fit uh, at that level and I can estimate the extreme value index, which is positive. So um, and then also this plot is only uh, valid for positive values, for positive values of Xi. So the Pareto plot and the, 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 that uh, particular logarithm excess plot uh, is only value for Xi positive. And so um, what, of course, is very important is to diagnose the value of Xi because that leads to the type of extreme value distribution we are dealing with. And so now, instead of looking at this logarithm, we're going to use that the mean excess function, right? So what's the the average of um, the values, the excess values of, of the values above a threshold, given that you're above a threshold? And so again, we're going to estimate, try to, to plot this mean excess function in a sort of a quantile plot. And so to do that, we have to calculate uh, what that function is. And so... Um, Theoretically, uh, we can ever again uh, derive that, uh, well, if you want to calculate this mean excess function, uh, then I can calculate that simply by, uh, you can calculate it by an integral if you're looking at uh, the PDF, but we don't have the PDF. So we, we calculate directly uh, this mean excess function using the quantile function. So remember, the quantile function is, uh, is, this, is basically the inverse of the distribution function. So if you indeed plug in the quantile function into this mean excess function, then uh, you find that that is u to the minus xi as u goes to infinity. So again, if I take now the logarithm of this, then you get a linear function of, of xi, and this is now uh, essentially for any xi. It is not just limited for, uh, for positive values of xi. So again, I would be looking at minus the log of one minus p. This is basically this, this thing here. Uh, and plot that against uh, the logarithm uh, of, of this 
uh, mean excess function, which is now uh, without a logarithm. So this is the threshold. This is the value of, of, of the threshold. And this is uh, the average above that threshold. So I'm only looking at the data above that threshold. That's why I only goes to J. I use the J highest values and not all the values. So if you apply that a couple of diamond data sets, you see something really interesting. Um, first of all, you notice um, that this is the mean excess function for one data set. Um, I, I don't think we need to look at the bottom here. I think we want to just look at the at the top uh, plots here. Um, these are other other types of plots. So if you look at the top plots here, we have two cases. Uh, one case, you notice clearly that uh, xi is positive. So again, these are diamond uh, um, these are diamond values. Uh, I know this are these are um, logarithm. Uh, sorry, these are mean excess. Uh, of that, and so um, here uh, above the threshold. Uh, so here we see um, um, a linear uh, relationship occurring, uh, and so uh, that indicates uh, quite heavy tail. While well, in this other diamond data set, we notice that uh, it starts to increase, but then it starts to level off. So that indicates uh, more of a global type distribution. Okay, that uh, sums up uh, what we've been doing with peak over threshold uh, methods. So in in, uh, in summary, uh, we know that we've shown that um, peak over threshold, we get similar extreme value distributions for maxima. So there's this, this shape parameter xi uh, that's important to be estimated. Uh, the, the difference with the peak over threshold method and the maxima is that we get more data, but more data could lead potentially to bias. And so we have to worry about the selection of the threshold above which we're going to fit our models because that will affect the amount of bias versus the amount of variance that we um, we have. And so in order to do that, it's it's good to make a few diagnostic plots to see where would be a good, uh, and even by eyeballing, you could do that, where would be a good threshold to be selecting.